of Orthodox spirituality. A wondrous journey into Orthodoxy. Prepared and presented by Angeliki Antonaku Lekea. Dear listeners, we are continuing to read from the book Family Life, the fourth volume in the series Spiritual Counsels by Saint Paisios. God is the Lord and has appeared unto us. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Part 5, Chapter 3 Disability is a Blessing from God. Facing Disability Correctly Yeronda, can a disability create an inferiority complex? This is foolish nonsense. But Yeroda, this does happen sometimes to the disabled. It happens because they do not position themselves correctly. When they begin to see their disability as a blessing from God, then they position themselves correctly and are delivered from seeing their disability as a disadvantage. If a young child has a disability and has not been helped to have a sense of joy for his disability, then there may be extenuating circumstances if he has feelings of inferiority. But if he grows up and still carries feelings of inferiority, it means that he has not comprehended the more profound meaning of life. A little girl, at the age of nine, had a tumor in her eye, and the doctors had to remove that one eye. The children in school taunted her, and this poor child was tormented. Her father came to my Kalivi and told me of the problem. Yeroda, I thought if I brought her everything she asked for, that it might help her to be happy and forget the taunting and her disability. But how can I do that? when I have five more children who would be envious because they do not understand the circumstances. What kind of a solution is that? I asked. That is a false consolation. It is not a solution. If you give her every dress she asks for now, after a few years she will be asking you for a Mercedes. How will you afford that? Then she will learn that some people have helicopters on their verandas and she'll be asking for one too. What will you do then? Try to help your child feel content that she has one eye. Help her to feel that she is a martyr. In the early church, the eyes of many martyrs were pulled out, their ears, their noses were cut off, and the onlookers laughed at them. While these courageous people were suffering pain and ridicule, they never wavered from their martyrdom. If the child can understand her disability and face it with a sense of praise, God will include her with the confessors of the faith of the Church. Is it a small thing for God to have provided that the child's eye was removed surgically without pain and to be numbered among the confessors? A child like that has no sins to be accountable for, and she will receive a pure reward because of this disability. The poor man thanked me and left, consoled. He truly helped his little girl understand that her disability was a blessing from God and that she should praise God for it. As such, the little girl grew up normally and naturally and went on to study literature at university. She is now a teacher and is more joyful than other young women who have everything but remain tormented because they have not comprehended the more profound meaning of life. When people do not understand the deeper meaning of life, they are tormented by both the blessings 
and the opportunities given to them by God for their salvation. One who positions himself correctly can enjoy all things. Even a lame person can enjoy his disability. And even if a person is not very bright, he can still be happy. A poor person can also enjoy his poverty. Of course, I understand how the disabled have to endure so many difficulties, and I pray for them, especially for the young woman. You see, a disability may not be as heavy a burden for a young man as it is for a young woman who wants to marry and have a family. The blind in particular have so many difficulties in their disability. It is so difficult for them to take care of themselves. They often stumble when they walk. In my prayers, I ask God to provide for the blind even a little ray of light so they can somehow take care of themselves. Yaroda, I too worry because I cannot see well enough to be able to read even one chapter from the New Testament. You have told us that if one can read a chapter a day, one can be sanctified. Why do you worry over this? If you read a few verses or just one word, or if you only reverence the gospel by kissing it, will you be sanctified any less? After all, you have not come to know Christ just now. Why don't you ponder over whatever you have read or whatever you have heard up until now? The entire foundation rests upon having the right attitude. Just say to yourself, Right now, God wants me to be like this. A few years ago, He wanted me to be different. A devout attorney in his old age could not see, and he once told me, Yaroda, pray for me that I may be able to see enough to read a little and to recognize the people I love. So I told him, You can recognize the people you love by their voices. As for the reading, you have been reading all these years. Now, just say the Jesus Prayer. It seems that this is what God wants you to do now. And from then on, the poor fellow felt greater joy than when he was able to see. The Heavenly Reward for Disability When we have a disability and are patient and do not complain because of it, then our reward is greater. All of the disabled have savings accounts open for their benefit. The deaf man receives a check from the treasury of God for his deaf ear, the blind person for his blind eye, and the lame for his lame leg. This is so important, and if they make a little effort to withstand the passions of the soul, they will receive wreaths from God. You see, the disabled war veterans receive pensions, and they also receive medals of recognition. To whoever has beauty, youth, health, and does not struggle to curb his shortcomings, God will say, In your life you enjoyed the gifts you were given, beauty, youth, health. What do I owe you now? Nothing. But whoever has a disability, either because he was born with it, or because he inherited it from his parents, or because he acquired it later, must rejoice because he will have something to receive in the other life particularly if he was not at fault for his disability. His heavenly reward will be pure, without any withholdings. It is no small matter for someone not to be able to stretch out his leg, to sit down on his own, to make his prostrations. In the other life, God will tell him, Come, my child, and sit comfortably in this armchair. This is why I say that I would have preferred a thousand times to have been born mentally disabled, blind, deaf, for then I would have something to receive from God. If the disabled do not complain, but rather humbly praise God and live a life close to Him, they will have the best position in paradise. God will place them among the confessors and the martyrs who gave their arms and legs for the love of Christ and are now in paradise, constantly kissing with devotion the arms and legs of Christ. Yaroda, what happens when someone is deaf and is also a grumbler? 
Even small children will grumble. God does not pay attention to many things. You see, the good parents love all their children equally, but pay particular attention to the ones who have special needs or are disabled. God, our benevolent Father, does the same thing for those of His children who are weak physically or spiritually, as long as they have a good disposition and give Him the right to intervene in their lives. Mentally Disabled Children Mothers of mentally disabled children who are constantly making scenes, getting things dirty, endure so many hardships. It is a true martyrdom. I met a mother who has a big boy, but is unable to control him. Oh, the things he does. The poor child takes his own filth and smears the walls, the bedding. The mother tidies up, cleans the house, puts everything in its place, and then the child turns everything upside down and soils everything again. Even though she hides the detergents, he finds them and tries to drink them. He throws entire cabinets down from the balcony. God has protected them all, and no one has been hurt so far. And this hasn't been going on for a day or two. It's been like this for years. Yeroda, can someone who is mentally disabled have humility and kindness? Of course he can. Look at that child who comes often to the monastery. He may be mentally disabled, but his kindness cannot be found among many intelligent people. Oh, how he prays and does prostrations. When I had trouble with my hernia and could not do prostrations, his parents told him, Father is sick. He cannot do his prostrations. I'll do them, he said, and then did the prostrations for me and got soaking wet with perspiration. He has such filotimo, such a noble spirit. Once he was beaten up by a child in his neighborhood, and he stretched out his arm in friendship and said, Goodbye. Who in his right mind does that, even if he has read the gospel and many spiritual books? A few days ago, when his entire family came to see me, he sat next to me and his little sister a little further away. Come, close to father, he said and placed her next to me. This was a very moving thing for me, and I gave him a large cross made with mother of pearl, which had been brought to me from Jerusalem. As soon as he took it into his hands, he said the word, Ya yeah, Ya, yeah, and indicated how he would place it on the grave of his grandmother. It is incredible. He wants nothing for himself, everything for others. Not only is that child going directly to paradise, he will bring his parents along too. I would consider myself blessed to be in his place, even if I could not understand and speak clearly. While God has given me so many gifts, I have rendered them useless. In the other life, even theologians will hide in the presence of that blessed child. I am thinking that the theologian saints in heaven will not be in a better position as to the knowledge of God than these children. Perhaps the just God will grant something more to these children as they lived such deprived lives here on earth. Mental Illnesses Yeroda, when someone is unhappy and depressed, what should he do to overcome such melancholy? Divine consolation is needed. And how can it be attained? By getting hooked on Christ, and Christ will give it to him. Many times there is confusion between philotimo and egoism. Most schizophrenics are sensitive souls. Something insignificant happens or something they cannot face, and they suffer a lot. One kills someone and goes on as if nothing has happened, while a sensitive person will accidentally step on a kitten's leg and suffer to the point of not sleeping and worrying about the incident. And if he does not sleep for two or three nights, 
he will then naturally run to the doctor. Yeroda, psychology tells us that in order to help a mentally ill person, the cause must be discovered. Yes, but only if there is a cause, for in some cases, while certain things may be natural and physiological, and in a sense justifiable, people will enter into a cycle of reasoning that can lead them to mental confusion. Perhaps I have some inherited condition. Perhaps I am not well, they ask. I knew a young man who studied at the university. He read 11 hours a day and was on a scholarship. He also helped his family because his father was sick. In the end, he got very tired for he was sensitive. He had constant headaches and received his degree with great effort. He then started thinking that perhaps he had some inherited condition. What inherited condition? It only takes reading 11 hours a day for someone to become exhausted, not to mention also having to help the parents and being so sensitive. Yeronda, a child showed signs of depression after his father's suicide. Could his condition be inherited? It may be that the child was emotionally traumatized. It isn't necessarily an inherited condition. Plus, we do not know the father's condition or what drove him to commit suicide. Of course, a child whose father is reticent will require some help. For if the child also keeps to himself, fearing that he has inherited his father's character, he may become ill. God always permits a person to be tested as much as he can endure. But when you add to that other people's taunts, the soul succumbs to the extra burden and groans. The insane are made more insane by sane people. In the beginning, insanity can be managed. In the past, there were no psychiatric hospitals to care for those who were insane, and so they were often kept chained and confined to a room. There was a woman, Betty Stettel, they called her, who was confined in a house. The children made fun of her and threw rocks at her. The unfortunate woman would get angry and she would shout and throw things back at them. But in the other life, you will see that Betty Stettel will outrank many sane and knowledgeable women. I also remember another case. There was a family with an older daughter who was mildly mentally disabled, but was very kind. She was 40 years old, but seemed like five. Oh, the tricks young and old played on her. Once her parents let her cook while they went to the fields to work. Her brother was to come in from the field to bring in the corn and was to take the prepared food to the field for their parents and the workers to eat. The poor thing had gathered the squash, the eggplants, the string beans from the garden and had them ready for cooking. Her youngest sister, who was a perfect troublemaker, guided the donkey to the vegetables, and the animal ate them all. Now the unfortunate sister had to go again to the garden and gather vegetables, and she didn't say a word. By the time she had prepared them again, her brother came, and she was just then putting the food on the fire to cook. The brother unloaded the animals, and when he saw that the food had not been cooked yet, he gave her such a beating. What torments she had to endure each day. Her poor mother would pray that her daughter would die before she did, because she was concerned about who would be able to look after her. And indeed, it was the daughter who died first. In any case, those who are not well in the mind are better off than many others. Not being fully responsible for their actions, they pass on into the other eternal life without difficult examinations and tests. Amen.
Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. The correct stance of parents regarding their children's disability. There are some mothers who upon discovering that the child they're carrying will be born with a handicap or be mentally disabled, decide to have an abortion. They don't think that even a baby has a soul. How many fathers come and tell me, why is my child afflicted with cerebral palsy? Why did God make him like that? I cannot bear it. Such an attitude has so much impudence before God, so much obstinate self-will, so much egoism. If God should help such people, they will become even worse. One time, a college student who had received electroshock therapy as his mind had come unhinged because of his thoughts, came with his father to my Kalivi. The unfortunate young man had been pressured a great deal by his family and he had a strong devotion he would do deep prostrations hitting his head on the ground perhaps god will feel sorry for the ground and for me who am hitting it he would say this thinking impressed me he was hoping that god would feel sorry for the earth which was being hurt by his head and in the process feel some compassion for him, too. He felt himself unworthy of God's direct mercy. Whenever he felt pressured, he came to the holy mountain. I would help him put his thoughts in order. He would be well for several months, but then it would be the same thing all over again. The father didn't want their friends to see his son, because that would damage his own reputation. I realized he had a serious problem with his ego when he told me, In public, I am compromised by my son. When his son heard this remark, he responded with a sharp rebuke, Father, humble yourself. I may be insane, but I behave openly and freely. Do you expect me to squeeze into some type of a mold? Accept that you have an insane son and go on with your life openly and freely. Are you the only father with an insane son? Hearing this, I thought to myself, now which of these two is the insane one? Do you see where egoism can lead us? A father that wants the destruction of his son. When I lived in the world, I knew a mentally disabled person whose relatives would not take him with them whenever they went somewhere with company so that they would not be embarrassed by him. They even made fun of me for being nice to him and taking the time to talk to him. But I held him in a better place in my heart than those others. It is you alone I have offended. I have done what is evil in your sight. Chapter 4 Spiritual Laws The elder, in his conversations with people about their various problems, often referred to spiritual laws, and even wrote on this subject in the book Elder Haji Georgis the Athenite. How spiritual laws work. Yeroda, which laws are called spiritual laws? I will explain them to you. Just as we have physical laws in nature, we also have spiritual laws in spiritual life. For example, when someone throws a heavy object into the air as high as he can, with as much force as he can, that same object will fall back down with all the more force and be shattered into pieces. This is a law of physics. In spiritual life, the more one exalts himself with pride, 
the greater his spiritual fall will be. And analogous with the height of his pride, he too will be shattered into pieces. For the proud rise, reaching a point, and then they fall crushed to the ground. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased. Luke 18 verse 14 Compare Matthew 23 verse 12 This is a spiritual law But there is a very significant difference between physical laws and spiritual laws While physical laws do not contain compassion and people cannot change them Spiritual laws do contain compassion and a person can certainly change them for he can interact with his creator and most compassionate God. If a person could realize at once the rising of his pride and say, My God, I have nothing of my own, and I am full of pride. Forgive me. The compassionate hands of God will take hold of him immediately and set him down gently without making his fall noticeable. In this way, he will not be crushed, since with repentance he had shown the crushing of his heart had already taken place. The same holds true for the saying of Jesus in the Gospel. For all that they take, the sword shall perish with the sword. Matthew 26, verse 52. In other words, if I offer a sword, by law I must pay with the sword. But when I become aware of my mistake, my conscience drives a sword into my heart and I ask forgiveness from God. Then the spiritual laws cease to function, and I receive God's love as balsam. In other words, through the abyss of God's judgments, we see God change when people change. When the unruly child comes to his senses, repents, and is censured by his conscience, then his father caresses him with love and consoles him. It is not an insignificant thing for a person to be able to change the decision of God. Do you do evil? God gives you a smack. Do you say, I have sinned? He gives you blessings. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Dear listeners, our show has come to an end. Thank you for listening. We will continue once again where we left off in our next show. Until then, be well. Readings of Orthodox Spirituality Wondrous journey into orthodoxy. Prepared and presented by Angeliki Antonaku Lekea.